Thank you to Sony for sending us this sample. This is the latest 2023 Sony Walkman MP3 player. This digital audio player features some high-end specs and a lot of abbreviated selling points that we're going to get into later on in the video. A few standout features is that it has a micro SD card slot, 25 hours of continuous play, and a 3.5mm headphone jack, as well as a 4.4mm balance connection. Everything wrapped up in one of the most beautiful builds we've seen on a DAP. This features a low pile hard rubber backing with a flush glass screen and bezel design. It also weighs a whopping 221 grams, which is heavier than most smartphones. On the side, you get a sunken beveled array of buttons as well as a hold button so you don't accidentally interact with it when you're playing music. Gold copper accents surround each of the headphone jacks and they include a little USB plug at the bottom. So today we're going to be going over two things, audio of course, capping off the video near the end, and overall usability of what this can do outside of just music. This is a chunky boy, this is no joke. It kind of looks like a smartphone and we'll explain what we mean. This is a slate kind of device, which means that you can essentially consider this a screen with a capacitive touch and capabilities to download applications, etc. It has a drop down up top, you have all of your settings, you have all of your quick access like Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, etc. How can this be used as a smartphone? It can and it can't. For example, if I use an example here, this is an Xperia 1 Mark III. I have an earpiece, a camera, and a microphone like that. So you can't necessarily do any video calling on this, and you can't necessarily do any calling on it whatsoever because it doesn't have an earpiece. It doesn't have a microphone and it doesn't have a camera. You can, however, utilize it for certain applications like WhatsApp, Line, Kakao Talk, Facebook Messenger. You can even use messaging on Skype and stuff like that because it does have the ability to do Wi Fi. Even if you run to a point where you say, Well, I need data, you can simply tether this to your phone that has a data plan, and away you go. You now have mobile data communication on this. You can go over to Google Play and download anything. Now, I will say it does have Google Play, which is tremendous because it also has Android 12, but it's scaled pretty poorly. For example, if I look at it like this, you only get two or three things you can see on the screen before you run out of space. And this is the absolute smallest display we chose in terms of the settings on the back end. You can't make it any smaller than this, which means in its inherent form, two gigantic icons show on the screen. And it's just, it's an unusable device in terms of it being scaled properly, but that's all they could do. Because if they made it any smaller, you couldn't see and everything would be too small to touch. Because remember, this is an extremely small device in congruency to what we see on a daily basis with devices like this smartphone, for example. We are losing several inches of screen real estate, meaning things are just going to be harder and harder to tap the smaller the screen gets shrunken. However, that being said, you do have the ability to do virtually anything. For example, you only see a few apps here, but if you swipe up, you get the full experience. There's nothing left out. This is an Android tablet for all intents and purposes, minus the intents of a camera and your piece and a microphone. But you can do things like read books, you can read manga, you can read PDFs, you can utilize this as a small micro reader. And depending on the style of application you're using, you can even use it as a one handed device to turn pages. Granted, the application allows you to turn pages with the volume buttons. So there's a lot of capabilities and potential that this can harness. Now, obviously, we're going to get into the audio section in a little bit, but there's a couple more things. You see, we told you guys this in the unboxing, and a lot of you guys can't seem to grasp the concept of what we mean. We wish this had a speaker, not for utilizing the $900 price tag to listen through a tiny little speaker the size of a pencil eraser. That's not what we mean. You can't even get your bearings. For example, I want to just hear what this song sounds like just a little bit, just a second to maybe plug this into my receiver using the 3.5 or the 4.4 up top. I can't do that. I can't listen to it. I can't understand where I am in a song. Maybe someone sent a WhatsApp voice clip. 
Maybe I want to view something on the internet and utilize this and say, hey, someone sent me an email. I'm going to open up Gmail, my Google services, and I'm going to watch a YouTube video. You can't do any of that on here because they completely lock you out by having no onboard sound. I'm not saying that's the purpose you buy it. I'm saying there's no reason not to have it. They have a gigantic lanyard loop down below. They have tons of real estate down below. And it's not like this is a cheap unit. This is a very high quality, expensive unit. I would have liked to see at least a bonus speaker. It doesn't make sense not to have one. Something else we must show you is that this has a ton of storage eaten up by the Android system. This is a 64 gigabyte model and 15 gigabytes nearly is just the system storage. So you're using a ton of information and as you can see we don't have anything on here. We have no images, we have no audio that we put on ourselves. This is all preloaded stuff. The only thing we have is a 13 kilobyte example ebook. So that being said, it is an incredibly big deterioration of the advertised gigabytes because you don't actually get that. There is a ton of things in here when it comes to audio. You have equalizer that you can change each individual thing. You can adjust it to your heart's content up and down every single portion of this. You click done, you go on to something next. You have direct, which is another thing you can do. You can go DSEE, -E, which is another thing you can do. And we're going to get into all these abbreviations at the end of the video. So don't you have DC phase linearizer, you have dynamic normalizer, you have vinyl processor, you have DSD remastering. There is a bunch of technology that goes into this to make sure that digitizes and encodes the music to give you a near analog experience, which basically means that this should sound as close as humanly possible to the lossless, unhindered, authentic sound from the respective artist. It's not a hundred percent because it is digital. This is not analog. This is not a needle scraping on vinyl, a record. It's not. This is a digital piece of technology, but they have tons of things in place that we're going to get into right now to assist you in getting the best experience possible. Now here comes the technical portion of this review, so stick around as best you can. There's a lot of terminology and abbreviated symbols that Sony is throwing at you when it comes to the advertisement of this unit. So let's start off with high res audio. High res audio means high resolution audio, which equates to audio that has been captured and reproduced at a higher bit rate, 24 bit, 96 kilohertz, and beyond which for the layman means it allows you to experience music much closer to the way it was actually recorded. DSD is one of the best lossless audio formats. Originally actually trademarked as a name by Sony and Philips has slowly turned into a bit more of a generic throw around word in the world of audio. It's extremely technical, but basically it stands for direct stream digital and offers a higher bit rate than FLAC files, which is already colloquially known as lossless audio. However, DSD does have a trade-off in that it lacks modulation and bit depth, but there's absolutely no way we can dive into that in this review. LDAC it is a proprietary audio coding technology developed by Sony themselves, which allows streaming high resolution audio over Bluetooth connections at up to 990 kilobits per second. Basically, the infrastructure is in place to have less quality loss when transmitting audio through Bluetooth devices like headphones and speakers, which traditionally some electronic devices suffer from. 360 Audio 
Ah, oh, well, we're gonna skip over this one, because if you look on the Sony website, there's about four pages, three videos, and 14 subsections all defining and promoting what 360 audio is, but basically, to sum it up, it's a super high-quality experience developed by Sony that allows the user to get the full experience from vocals, pianos, to individual high and low notes, so maybe read up on that if you have the time. MQA Audio this stands for Master Quality Authenticated. This file format achieves a way to digitally capture, as close as possible, the audio to the way it was originally recorded via analog. So it sounds as good as the original? Well, not really, but again, as close as you can get with digital. DSEE -E, Ultimate. Using AI, DSEE, Digital Sound Enhancement Engine, upscales compressed digital music files in real time while you're listening to it, which delivers even greater benefits for CD quality lossless audio. It restores things like acoustics, subtleties, and it has a greater range. It provides a richer, more complete listening experience. Finally, Vinyl Processor. This picks up a lot of the things lost when you move into a digital format. I'm almost certain they have some fancy schmancy reasoning for this one as well, but we'll leave it at that and basically say that this has really good audio, everybody. DAPs, or digital audio players, are not more rampant than they've ever been, because a lot of the Fairweather fans are completely satisfied by what the average smartphone can offer. But the purists will disagree. Things like vinyl processing, AI algorithms to assist with proper megahertz ratings, and balanced 4.5 headphone outputs are just things you don't see on the average smartphone. But this comes with a caveat. This is not cheap. This is $900, and it's not even the cheapest DAP that Sony makes. Tread carefully, but enjoy higher quality playback than some smartphones like the one you're watching this very video on. For GoodyReader.com, this is Peter.